being born to teenagers and raised around four divorces and six marriages as a child between my two parents, in and out of households, going to nine different schools by eighth grade in the upstate New York area and then also in um, the Charlotte Winston-Salem area of North Carolina. I was always the new kid. Many times was picked on. Didn't feel like I fit into the groups. I remember crying a lot in North Carolina in particular, sitting there. Why? Why did I get pulled from my family in New York? Why am I here in this place in North Carolina? I miss everybody. Why am I so isolated and alone? And I said a prayer to God. Help me. Help me find this. Help me find my way through this. Help me through this pain. And part of all that childhood led me to wanting to succeed, wanting to be the best. And in essence, looking back, it was, look at me, am I good enough? Now, am I lovable? Look at me. So that actually led me to become a national bicycle champion. Prior to that, it led me to become a top wrestler, a top athlete in everything I did. Uh, all the sports I played. I played baseball. I played uh, football. I ran track. I ran cross country and did very well in all of those. Wrestling in particular and bike riding, BMX, freestyle, trick riding. And uh, look at me. Am I good enough? Then... April 1st, 1993, or sorry, April 2nd, a day after April Fool's Day, April 2nd, 1993, my platoon, 3028. I was the honor man out of my platoon from United States Marine Corps boot camp. And as a father, like, I understand my parents didn't have the, the resources, but wow, how could they not have the resourcefulness? To not do whatever it took to be there to watch their son graduate as the honor man from boot camp at Paris Island. I don't get it. Although with my dad, here's the here's the the out. My grandparents were there, surprisingly. My grandparents, my dad's parents were there. They brought their RV down. And it surprised me when I was told that I had some family there. I didn't know who would even show. Um but my grandparents, my, my grandpa Beale and my grandma Virginia. And they said when, when they were there, people were bragging about how good their, their sons did. And they're like, yeah, I think our grandson did, grandson did good. He's always been, you know, high achiever. He's always been the top of whatever he does. I'm sure he did pretty well. And then, as I was told from my grandma, uh, someone came up this. Are you Mr. and Mrs. Beale? Yes. The base general would be honored if you would sit next to him during the graduation ceremony, here's your here's your pass. Your grandson is the honor man from his platoon. And boy, my grandma said my, my grandpa's eyes lit up and he just felt so proud. And he excused everybody, you know, oh, I guess we got to go sit with the base general. He excused himself from everybody that was out there to watch their sons. And and, and there, was, there were some WMs, women Marines, their daughters graduate. He said, well, I guess I, I guess my grandson did all right. <laughs> I go sit with the base general. And my grandma said he was so proud sitting there watching me graduate. So I say that because while my grandparents were there, my dad was running the auto repair shop that my grandpa started decades before that. And uh, my dad probably wanted to go, but was stuck in the family business running the business. But um, the other aspect of that is and it hurt my feelings as a child, but I'm so thankful and grateful for my dad to have that foresight. Um, he never taught me how to turn a wrench. He never taught me how to do an oil change. He never taught me how to do anything with a car. And as a child, that really hurt my feelings and hurt my feeling of worthiness and good enough. And later on in life, he shared, I didn't want you getting sucked into the family business like I felt I was pressured into doing. I had to give up my dreams to be the provider uh, and be the person that, that ran the family business. Like, I didn't want you to be shackled to this. He's like, that's why I didn't teach you how to turn a wrench. That's why I didn't teach you anything. I didn't want you to lose your dreams. I didn't want you to be 
by default, the next person who carries on this family tradition. And lo and behold, my dad died, then my grandma died, and after my dad died in 2009, my grandma asked, would you like to come in and, and run the shop as a business owner? And I declined it because I remember my dad telling me that. And, uh, wow. So when my grandma died, prior to her dying, she did, I believe, sell it. But uh, she wasn't in great financial situation at all before she passed. <sighs> but all of my being number one, I had such a drive to be the number one salesperson, to be number one in any sports activity I did, to be number one. And it really was at the core, am I good enough now? Am I lovable? Am I worthy? And that led me to being a high achiever and a high performer. But now, and even in, in Marine Corps boot camp, I didn't go knowing there was even such a thing as the honor man. There were other people in my platoon that were gunning for it. They, that was their goal, to be the honor man. I had no idea that thing even existed up until April 1st, the day before graduation, when they announced, Beal, you're the honor man. I'm like, what the heck is an honor man? I didn't even know there was such a thing. Okay, come with me. And I had to go get my, my dress blues uh, fixed and added something to my blues or something. And, and um, So that was the only one that I did which circles back to this lesson. I didn't set out or have a goal to be the number one out of my platoon. I was just there doing my damn best. And, and in doing that, helping others be their best. Helping squash the beef. Helping the platoon act as a unit. I was the guide of the platoon. And I didn't want that role either. But halfway through boot camp, Beal, you're the guide. Ah, oh, shit. I didn't want that. It comes with a lot of responsibility, a lot of attention. And it just so happened halfway through boot camp, um, it transitioned to where now the guide was the one who took the brunt of everybody. If anybody in the platoon messed up, the guide was the one who paid the punishment. Prior to that, if anybody messed up, they paid the punishment. Halfway through the boot camp, they switched to anybody messes up, the guide gets the punishment. So I had a meeting with everybody. I said, listen, I'll be happy. If you're giving me your all, I will get punished all day long if need be. I will take it. But if you're not giving me your all, you're not giving your all for this entire platoon to work together and achieve the goals that we have, and I'm getting punished for you slacking, we're going to have some problems. All I ask is you, you give your all. That's it. I'll be happy to be punished as much as possible. But if you're slacking... And I'm getting punished for you slacking. That's not cool at all. We're going to have some problems and issues with that. And lo and behold, the platoon came together. We won all that you could win without even really going for it. Like it just was a nice byproduct, a nice, oh, by the way. Because with everyone giving their all, we ended up winning the average high PFT, physical fitness test. Everybody gave their all with their running, with their pull-ups, with their sit-ups. Everyone gave their all. We finished number one out of all the platoons graduating that day, that, that cycle. We won the, the trophy, highest PFT average. We also gave our all at the rifle range. We had the highest rifle range score average. Uh, we won that trophy. And then we also gave our all and won the drill. There was a drill competition. We won the drill competition. Everyone gave their all, and we won all three. And I didn't, know, I didn't know there was a thing, but afterwards they told me, oh, wow, that's very rare that a platoon wins the triple towers. We won the triple towers without even knowing. How? Because we just gave our all. And that's kind of where I am at this point of my life. It's like winning in my old days was, was in my old uh many many decades was look at me am i good enough am i worthy am i lovable now i'm at peace i know i'm worthy i know i'm good enough i know i'm lovable but nothing brings me more joy than helping others nothing brings me more feeling of satisfaction and happiness than helping others 
achieve their goals, to turn their dreams into reality, to stop overcomplicating life in this journey, and to just be. And, and I teach people, you know, a lot of the, the philosophies I teach make today great. You are not dead yet. I am me, F you. Like, stop overcomplicating success. Stop overcomplicating life. All these, these, these teachings that I share simplify this journey. Because guess what? This journey will beat you down. This journey will bash you and have you skin in your knees and, and defeat and feeling like, what, is it rigged against me? Until you can make that transition to say, no, it's rigged for me. It's all a learning lesson. It's all a boot camp of life to lead you to this point right here, right now. Right here, right now is your time to shine. Your life has led you up to this point to where you know and I know you have way more that you're capable of. You have huge potential. Even if you've achieved what others would call great things already, that's only a tip of the iceberg of what's to come. I know it and you know it. It's time to recognize you are good enough. You are worthy. You are lovable. You are someone who has so much potential hidden below what others see. I see it. That's my gift. The God-given gift I, I, I receive and I, I'm so thankful for is I see the potential in you. I see the potential in all those that I cross paths with, all those that I work with. And I also have the empathy to recognize you are good enough. You are worthy. You are lovable. And your best is yet to come. You aren't dead yet. Your whole life has prepared you for this moment. Your whole life has prepared you for being you fully and unapologetically. And guess what? I only attract people with, with good, kind hearts who also love helping others. What I'm doing here in sharing my message is fulfilling one of the great mentors, one of the great shoulders of giants that I stand upon is, the, is the, the amazing Zig Ziglar who I was fortunate to meet and spend some time with before he passed. And his favorite quote, you can have everything in life you want if you simply help enough others get what they want. That's it. That's all. I want to help so many people. I want to help. You, know, you can't help everybody. You, I want to help the ones who ask for help. I want to help the ones who know that they are good enough. They are lovable. They are worthy. They are someone who has hidden potential. They have a higher purpose. They have gifts that aren't being displayed to the world yet. That's what I help them do. I help them shine. I help them be themselves fully and unapologetically. And guess what? The results come. As you sow, so shall you reap. The more people you help, the more you're rewarded for that. When done properly. When tending to that field. Let's, let's go back to sowing and reaping. You have a field. You have your life. You have this amazing property. So fertile. So capable. Yet in many cases, most people have let the weeds take over. They haven't taken a proactive strategic, uh, let's, let's maximize this property to produce what it's capable of producing. And I will say, I'm of the belief that none of us even come close to tapping into the full potential of what we have for this plot of property that we call life. But when you tend to it proactively, strategically, you can plant your visions. You can plant your imagination. You can plant your desires, your wants, your needs. Here's what I want for my health, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Here's what I want for my key relationships. You plant that intention into the soil of your mind. And you keep the weeds out and you stay focused on what do I want? Many people, much of society gets caught up in the fear, gets caught up in the propaganda, gets caught up in the what I don't want. Well, the rub is whatever you give energy to grows. And if you're focusing on what you don't want, you're going to get more of what you don't want. As you calm your mind, 
and as you get more grounded and as you follow the strategies that I help my clients implement with ease in their life, you stay focused. A, you gain clarity on what you actually want. B, you remain focused to steer your mind, your thoughts, your words, and your actions solely on what you want. And very soon, those seeds that you planted, you're now reaping the rewards. Your dreams have become reality. It happens rather quickly, but it begins with making a choice. Enough is enough. Now is your time. I see you. I see the potential you have. I see the hidden gifts within you. I'm honored our paths crossed. Just like I was the guide in the Marine Corps to guide my platoon to winning without the intention of winning. Just, it was a nice byproduct. I help guide you to winning in life, which is a nice byproduct. You get the, you, you reap the rewards to have the optimal health, to have the optimal relationships, to have the optimal financial situation. But that all circles back to you having the peace, the happiness, the joy, the love, the fulfillment of being you fully and unapologetically. That's what I do. That's what I help my clients do. If you want to be a part of that, the journey begins by completing this brief form at tombeal.com forward slash success. tombeal.com forward slash success. It's where all my clients begin. And in doing so, you're going to be asking your, yourself questions that most people never ask themselves. You'll have epiphanies just from completing that brief form. Then, here, here's the bottom line. Uh, if, if we decide to interact, it'll save us hours of getting to know each other because you'll invest the brief amount of time for that forum telling me where you are, where you're looking to go. It's going to give you super clarity, some epiphanies. It's going to give me a clear idea of where you are, where you're looking to go, and no, don't have to waste your time or my time. We can get right to the chase. And I've got a wide variety of solutions, a wide variety of ways that we can engage. And uh, my hope is... And my, my knowing is you will find peace. You will gain clarity. You will understand that this journey is brief regardless of how long we live. You will maximize the time you have left at the most amazing amusement park in the universe that I call life. It's an honor that our paths cross. I'm looking forward to possibly conversing with you sometime in the near future. Until then, make today great. Bye for now. <laughs>